Good morning, fellow Americans and all of Central Mississippi. You have tuned into the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. It starts now. My name is Clay Edwards. This is the Clay Edwards Show. And today is the day we have the opportunity to let the establishment know they can take this job and shove it. We have had enough. We have had enough. We have had enough. We have an opportunity to end this day saying free at last, free at last, free from the chains of Haley Barber and the good old boy network here in Mississippi. We got a chance to break free. We, we, look, we may look back in two years and say we're wrong. We might look back and say Cassidy was the wrong guy. But we know guest is. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, I've been in business a long time. You go through people. You hire somebody, think man, they're going to be a good hire. That's going to be a good guy. He's going to work out. Heck, I bet people have thought that about me before. Thought, man, this guy's going to fit in great here. He's going to be a good fit. He, you know, he works for the culture. He represents the things I represent, blah, blah, blah. You know, you get a couple months into it, a year into it, and you're like, eh, not so much. Just, uh, it ain't you, it's me. We got to make some changes. That's where I met with guests. Good guy. Thought he'd be great for the culture, you know. But America first. I keep saying this. If we don't put America first, there's not going to be a third district to worry about. I mean, we are, the Titanic has hit the iceberg and we are fighting for the last lifeboats. Get out there today and vote but I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Y'all know who, I, who I'm voting for. I'm voting for Cassidy. But get in there and do what's right. Don't worry about what your neighbors think. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. It's how we got Donald Trump in office. Look how great that went. Michael Cassidy has that opportunity to make that same kind of generational difference in Mississippi. If we, you know, the silent Trump voter. We need some silent Cassidy voters. I know everybody can't be as fired up as uh, Clay Edwards and the WYAB crew are. But you can get in there and you can make a difference. I know y'all are excited about it. I know you are. My phone don't stop about it. Never have I, have I generated as much, as many Facebook messages, tweets, text messages, SOS messages, carrier pigeon messages, that I have over this race. I think Mississippians are just fed up. And it may not even all be Cassidy's fault. I mean, not Cassidy. It may not all be Guest's fault. It, it, but he's just the product of, you know, of, of this this anger that everybody has. I, I, like, I see these pamphlets here, these mailers. I see, we got them stacked here in the studio. And it, all they talk about is... Cassidy, like Cassidy is a uh, seasoned politician. Like he's the one that went up there and voted for January 6th and voted to send trillions of dollars. Well, we'll end up being trillions of dollars to Ukraine. I'm going to jump in the way back machine real quick. This is an article because uh, some people and some supporters of guests, I don't want to say people in the guest campaign because that would be. I'm not sure who these tweets are coming from, but I was getting a, I was kind of under attack yesterday being called a liar over posting about guest voting on the January 6th stuff. Well, and then he continues to share this photo of him with Donald Trump. Well, that was like three years ago. Well, this is an an article from WTOK. This, uh, the, I think that's the news station uh, down on the coast or something like that. It says, um... So what was the date on it? May 20th, 2021. So this was not just barely over a year ago. This was 11 months ago. I'm sorry, 13 months ago. It says, uh, Former President Donald Trump is not happy with the 35 House Republicans who voted in favor of the January 6th commission, authored by Mississippi U.S. Rep. Benny Thompson. If passed, the legislation would establish an independent commission 
that would then investigate the riot at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th of this year. Democrats have blamed Trump for the event and proceeded to impeach him due to his alleged role in it. The impeachment passed the House but failed in the U.S. Senate. U.S. Rep. Michael Guest of Mississippi's 3rd District was one of the 35 Republicans who voted yes on the measure. His fellow Republican representatives in Mississippi, Rep. Steve Palazzo and Trent Kelly, voted against it. Here's a a quote from Trump. See, 35 wayward Republicans. They just can't help themselves. Trump wrote in a statement Thursday, quote, we have much better policy and are much better for the country, but the Democrats stick together and the Republicans don't. Michael Guest is a wayward Republican, my friends. Trump said it. And y'all know if Trump said it, it's true. Trump would not lie. Trump would not lie. So just want to, uh, I want to put that out there. You, whether you agree or disagree with January 6th, or you think those people shouldn't have stormed the Capitol and trespassed, been let in, whatever the case may be, you have to be allowed due process and a, and a, your right to a speedy trial. They're holding these people hostage for no reason. They're threatening them with life in prison for trespassing. None of these people have been charged with insurrection. This could be you. This could be me next time. We decide to go protest down at City Hall or the state capitol. Next time they try to force vaccines in our bodies and we decide to go protest. They could arrest us and throw us in a gulag. Put us out in Raymond at that hell hole of a jail to die. That's why this is important. If they'll do that to these patriots and they won't stand up and fight for them, they would do that to all of us. It's just very aggravating, man. Very, very aggravating to sit here and think about it. But I'm getting texts in from people already. They've been out and voted. They said, uh, Nathan says, don't blame me. I voted for Cassidy. <laughs> I did get a report that there is some shenanigans going on at the uh, polling station at the Lutheran Church on Old Canton Road. At 7.06, it had not opened yet. So not not open yet. Doors are open, but station is empty and not set up at all. And they have updated. It says, correction, poll workers are here, but in different location. They were told the location. They were told. They were they were not told the location to set up in. They were not told the location to set up in. Anyway, it's 7.15. They're still getting set up. So poll workers were late. <laughs> Imagine that. Poll workers late for uh, to do something in Jackson. Anyway. So if you're heading to the Lutheran Church on Old Canton Road, they're running behind there. <clears throat> Sorry, we're getting text in live time on the Guns and Gear text line here. I just want to make sure I get all the information over to you guys as it comes in. Let's see here. I know reading text don't make for the most interesting radio, but this is live time. I want to make sure y'all know what's going on. So they've been here at the building next door since 6. They said they called their supervisor, but no one answered. Well, there's that. All right, so something else I was thinking about last night. If you follow the Save Jackson uh, Twitter or Instagram page, you saw the meme that we shared. It's just a picture of Michael Guest. It said, Democrats for Guest. I just wanted to make sure all the Jackson voters, you know, that are in the 3rd Congressional District know that, you know, look, man, this is Benny's anointed, anointed guy. They work well together. You know, the Jackson Democrat is going to love Michael Guest. They need to get out there and make sure they vote for him, that that he is approved by the Democrat Party. (laughs) I'm being a little facetious. I I, I know, but, you know, I'm disgusted that, because here's the thing. The representatives from the Mississippi GOP, Neshoba GOP, whatever, birds of a feather flock together, begged for Democrat votes. Well, and then there's all kind of alleged rumors about black pastors being paid and to, to go get votes and this, that, and the other. I, I don't report on that kind of stuff because I can't prove it. But there's it's out there. People are talking about it. 
you know, what kind of favors is Michael Guest going to owe Benny Thompson and the Democrats? B -b 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 Benny and the Dems. All right, that was my lame uh, Benny and the Jets, Elton John thing there. But what kind of favors is Guest going to owe Benny? Or is uh, or is Benny helping Guest a favor for him on the January, given the January 6th vote? Is this the payback for that? We're going to take care of you. You're going to be all right. They'll be mad at you. We're going to get you. You're going to be back. You know, you remember in 2016, Hillary and them cheated. They just didn't cheat enough. Let's make sure today that we get out there and you don't let Benny and them help guest enough. You just overwhelm the polling stations precincts, whatever you call them. You overwhelm it with Cassidy votes. They're, they can't, I, and I'm not accusing anybody of cheating, but if you got Democrats coming in to vote, that, that that's blurring the line. You know, these, these Republicans that are begging for Democrat votes, they ought to have to vote Democrat in the, in the primary election. Y'all yeah. are so shady. So shady. All right, man, look, we're going to take a break real quick. Phone lines wide open. Uh, Matt Kike of Flowood, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram phone line is 601-879-0002. The Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. Again, uh, Matt Kike of Flowood phone line, 601-879-0002. Guns and Gear text line, 769 -241. 241-1944. We've got a caller on hold. Caller, I will be straight to you on the other side of this break. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show on 103.9 WYAB. America, you love your country, so it goes without saying that you also love your ride. And Auto Armor in Flowood wants to help you make that ride shine. Auto Armor in Flowood is Central Mississippi's premier automotive detail and ceramic coating shop. Servicing any type of vehicle, including ATVs, boats, and more. Need just a quick detail or paint correction? Auto Armor can make it happen. But if you're set to hit the road in a blaze of glory while flying the old red, white, and blue, Auto Armor should be your first and last call to give your ride a full ceramic coating. Auto Armor is locally owned and operated by the loud and proud American patriot, Clay Edwards. Auto Armor also proudly backs the blue, all military and first responders. So don't forget to ask for your discount. Call 601-260-0858 601-260-0858 or stop in today, fellow Americans. Auto Armor is located at 4394 Mangum Drive in Flowood. Online at AutoArmorMS.com. Auto Armor unapologetically American. All right, welcome back in to an election day edition of the Clay Edwards Show, a special runoff election out there in Congressional District 3. Real quick, this segment's going to be brought to you by Complete Exteriors Roofing and Gutters. Complete Exteriors Roofing and Gutters in Pearl wants to help you determine who to use when seeking a roof repair or work on your gutters. You need to choose a qualified, certified company that has a local brick and mortar building, a company that has been in business longer than two years, and offers a warranty. Complete Exteriors has a 4.9 Google review and has been in business for over 16 years, my friends. Complete Exteriors Roofing and Gutters can provide you with a professional and honest look at your roofing gutters. Complete Exteriors, quality without compromise. Check them out online at completeexteriorsms.com. And don't forget, they do have their roofs for troops rebate for uh, retired and uh, active military get $250 off a new roofing system at complete exteriors MS great folks man great folks over there they're very involved in the community and that's just something that I really really appreciate all right uh, hey something else um before we dive back into the nuts and bolts the phone lines are wide open I know I missed a couple calls there during the break the Matt Kike of flow with Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram phone line is 601 879 Zero two, uh, call me back, uh, and we'll get you on the air. Hey, if you're looking for some family fun this 4th of July, free plug here because it's free to get in. I don't mind plugging free stuff because I will be I will be there uh, Monday night out at Trustmark Park there in Pearl. 
uh, pearls during their <clears throat> annual Fourth of July firework show. Let's see here. I got the whole text. So the city of Pearl is once again teaming up with the Mississippi Braves and Mississippi Blue Cross Blue Shield for the Fourth of July fireworks. The M Braves have a home game against the Pensacola Blue Wahoos at six oh five on Monday, July fourth. Get your tickets to come celebrate Independence Day with baseball and fireworks. If you can't make it to the game, we encourage everyone to tailgate around Bass Pro Drive and enjoy the show. So, yeah, so there's a game this year, so it's not free to get in the stadium. So you got to buy a ticket. But let's be honest, it's the most affordable bang for your buck out there. We are the official radio station of the M Braves here at WYAB. Maybe a, maybe your boy can score us a couple tickets. Uh but look, a lot of people, I went last year, a lot of people just kind of tailgate around the Sam's Club and Outlet Mall and all that whole area around there and watch the fireworks. And they, look, they do it big. This ain't no middle of the mall fireworks stand. This is the real deal. This ain't St. Jackson. It's Pearl. And you know they do it big over there. Anyway, something fun to do. Uh, if you're looking for fireworks on 4th of July and don't want to blow your own hand off, Watch the pros do it. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. Let's get back into the guns and gear text line real quick. And then I want to talk about something else that's on my mind. So I clay message to all Republicans. It does not matter whether you did or did not vote in the primary. You are eligible to vote in today's runoff election. Michael Cassidy is the only true conservative. He needs your vote from Bill. That's on the Guns and Gear text line. Bill, thank you. And yeah, hey, just a reminder. That's how they're trying to drag Democrats out. Is by telling them they didn't have to vote in the primary. Same goes for Republicans. <laughs> if you didn't vote in the primary, you can get out and vote in the runoff today. So just a heads up. Don't let the... It'll be interesting, won't it, to see if the runoff has more has more voters than the uh, primary did. I just think that a lot of guest supporters got caught flat-footed. So we're going to see how all that shakes out. I know that Rankin County has gotten over double the amount of mail-in ballots, absentee ballots, whatever, for the runoff that they did for the primary. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, Something else I wanted to talk about here. Y'all know, look, man, I cut my teeth. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for talking about Jackson's nonsense. Uh, Jackson has uh, has outdone itself. And the second main reason that I moved out of Jackson, other than being scared that if I had to defend myself and shoot a Jackson Democrat, I would be charged with the crime instead of the person that was trying to rob or kill me, you know, instead of it being self-defense. What's the, anyway, the, the, the second most important issue was the water. You know, you kind of need it. Yeah. So Jackson is, of course, struggling with water. Everybody's having to boil water. I had to get my dad a couple of cases of bottled water yesterday. And I can tell you all a funny story about yesterday. I walked out of here and had a flat tire on my car and somehow I had to pray my way to the tire shop. I got to put some air in it, but get there and all my tires are dry rotted. I had to buy a whole new set of tires. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, I digress. The... uh trying to pull this video up for you all and um uh, wlbt is not cooperating let's see here but anyway so jackson here we go i want to play this video jackson's having major water problems it's costing restaurants money and y'all know if you've listened to this show for any amount of time that that i i, I ask why businesses would knowingly go open in jackson knowing the struggles so when they come out and they complain about the struggles I have a hard time feeling bad for you. I mean, I hate it for you. I wish you all nothing but success. But it's like, you know. You know what you're dealing with. Anyway, this is from WLBT last night. And it's not just the water problems. Uh, pride parade through a... And I, I, I'll give you three guesses where the pride parade was in Jackson. And the first two don't count. Ammonia tank leak coupled with problems with the filtration system at OB Curtis Water Treatment Plant led to the citywide boil water notice. Restaurants are still scrambling to meet health department requirements and the needs of their customers. As Rosalind Anderson reports, the repeated drinking water mandates come at a mounting cost to the food service industry. 
Are we taking good care of you guys today? Perfect. Babalu General Manager Heather Graves is keeping things flowing smoothly following a hectic weekend under the city's most recent boil water notice. The new general manager and manager are experiencing their first citywide boil water notice. This means learning a new routine of running a restaurant under health department mandates. We had the big pride parade on Saturday, which they shut down Dueling Avenue for. See, look at that. The pride parade shut down a street and made it difficult for people to get to this restaurant. The, the, the pride crowd always has to make it about them. Um, so in the midst of all that, we're having to try to figure out ways to get out of here with the road being closed to go get ice and get sodas and water. The supplies have cost the restaurant up to $800 since Friday. Another truckload could be on the way before the notice is lifted. We have all hands on deck. Jackson Public Works Director Marlon King is in constant communication with contractors replacing a series of damaged valves at the OB Curtis water treatment plant. It's not as if you just fix um, that you can easily identify them. You have to work through them sequentially. So if one, if you work to one and it works, then you move on to two. So you have to uh, fix them in, in that regard. Crews are also monitoring tanks and increasing water levels where needed. King estimates the citywide boil water notice may be lifted late Wednesday or early Thursday. It's a struggle that I guess going forward we need to somewhat plan for, but we shouldn't have to plan for it. In Jackson, Roslyn Ann. <laughs> you think you might need to plan for a water problem in Jackson? You think? <laughs> of course you do. Of course you need a plan for a water problem in Jackson. Jackson is a water problem. The whole thing. But don't don't plan. Be prepared. Just stay ready. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You know, I, there's some there's some I'm sure there's some available locations. Bobaloo would work very well in Rankin County. I mean, you know, just my opinion, but hey, what do I know, man? I I'm just a guy that runs his mouth on the radio. And spends money and lives in Rankin County. And lived in Jackson for 43 years. What do I know? Y'all just think I'm crazy. Uh, let me ask this, though. Speaking of Jackson water. Uh, hold on real quick. We got an update on the Guns and Gear text line about voting. Um, I, I'm hearing uh, my buddy Greg says a lot of people in line today. A lot more people in line today than for the primary at his spot. Hopefully for Cassidy. Uh, the other person that was texting about voting over at on Old Kent Road at the Lutheran Church says they got they casted their vote at 7.28 a.m. and the polls were supposed to be open at 7. So just a little food for thought. Off to a slow start this morning um, on some of the poll locations. And some are busier than they were <clears throat> a few weeks ago. You love to see it, man. You love to see people get out and exercise that right. Too many folks died for our ability to get out there and vote for us not to do it. They used to be wars fought over this stuff, you know? <laughs> hey, so speaking of this Jackson water stuff, and we're about to have to take another break, but I want to hit this before the break. Speaking of this Jackson water stuff, I want to tie this into the Michael Guest Ukraine stuff. And I want you guys' opinions. If, would you rather, because they've said they estimate it could cost a billion dollars to fix Jackson's water. And I know all of us here, you know, none of us support fixing Jackson's problems for them because Jackson created its problem by not taking care of it and fixing it and maintaining it over the years. But if you had to decide, $40 billion to Ukraine or a billion to Jackson, hey, let's just raise it up, say $4 billion, 10% of the money they sent to Ukraine just on that last little run. Anyway, whatever it is, to fix Jackson's water or send money to Ukraine. Be honest. Which Conservatives aren't big fans of either one. I mean, Michael Guest is a big fan of sending money to Ukraine, but which one do you sleep better at night knowing your tax dollars went to? Your capital city, even though we disagree with it, or Ukraine so they can launder it all and make politicians billionaires? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer my question for me. I would rather see that money go to Jackson. Stay in Mississippi. Fix the Wakanda water system. 
We'll be right back on the Clay Edwards Show on 103.9 WYAB. All right, welcome back in to the Election Day runoff edition of the Clay Edwards Show live here on 103.9 WYAB. This segment is going to be brought to you by my good friend, Miss Kimberly Harrelson. If you are looking to move to or from the Jackson area, particularly if you're looking to move from Jackson to another area that has running water, give my girl a call. Or check out our website, KimberlySalesMS.com. That's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-E, SalesMS.com. And her name is Kimberly Harrelson, and she is with Next Home Realty. You can also find her on Facebook right there. at Just go pull up the search bar and type in Kimberly with the proper spelling. Harrelson, Next Home, her business page will pop up, all of her contacts there. I'm not going to bog y'all down with phone numbers because you're driving, and I know you won't remember them. But you can remember her name. And just go to Facebook, search it, and poof, there she is. And you will get the best realtor in the area. Love Kimberly. Her husband's great people. He's uh, he's in the real estate business as well. Let him help you out. It's Kimberly Harrelson at Next Home Realty. All right, on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line, we got our first caller of the day. Hello, you're on there. Good morning, Clay. How are you? Hey, brother, I am doing good. How about yourself? Man, I am doing wonderful. Went out and made my vote count this morning. But as you know, I get to drive by a lot of these precincts, and it's amazing the uh, amount of people out waving and holding a guest sign at these precincts that there was nobody at in the first election. I know. It's funny how that works. Uh, we got the, the machine has been activated. Oh, absolutely it has. And also, just to let you know, our one of our fellow callers to the show that happens to have six or seven Cassidy signs in his yard, I believe I saw him on his road putting out a very large Cassidy sign at that precinct right next to his house. He said he was going to. Well, I, <laughs> I talked sure to him, I talked to him yesterday. And, uh, and as he was uh, as putting that up, uh, I made sure I let him know as I passed that, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, but it's funny. I was actually on the phone with him yesterday when I uh, passed by his house and honked the horn. I'm like, you see that little red car honking? That's me. He's like, I'm out here. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, like we said before, I think it has definitely opened the eyes of uh, not just um, not just the established Repo- establishment Republicans here in Mississippi, but, you know, all over the country that, hey, man, if we can uh, – if we can rattle a cage here in Mississippi, then it can be rattled anywhere in this nation. I, absolutely. I mean, I, I would love to be a fly on a wall at Haley Barber's house if, if Guest loses tonight. He's going he's gonna to kick a can, break a foot, something. He's like, I thought we had this taken care of. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, like you said earlier, with, uh, with the possibility of Benny – you know, doing a favor with getting some of uh, his constituents out. Um, you know, who's in whose pocket and how deep are you in their pocket? What do you owe them? What is the repayment for this process? You know, um, whenever it gets into that type of politics, you definitely do not represent the people. You represent your idea, your agenda. And from what I've heard from what Cassidy said on your show and the other shows there at uh, 103.9, um, you know, I don't think he'll be the type of person that's going to be in that situation. I sure hope not, you know, and I know I, I know, I told him, and I know, I know Kim told him I missed Jameson's interview yesterday. I was I was doing something, but I, I, like I say, I know that we Kim and I both told him, hey, man, you know, if, if we're not happy with you in two years, we'll, we'll bring you back home too, you know? That's right, man. Well, one of, I don't one want of the to. Things about you know? Right. One of the great things is, is that, hey, you know what? If we don't think you're doing what we like, we get the opportunity in two years to say, you know what? Let's try somebody else. Yep, I, I agree. And I, you know, I don't want to get into a cycle where we're where we're bringing somebody home every two years. I think they need a little room to breathe. But you know, two terms, four years, whatever. And you got to you got to do you got to make it count. Get up there That's and make right. it count. Once you figure out where the bathrooms are at, I expect stuff to start happening. Absolutely. Absolutely, Clay. Clay, thank you for what you do, my friend, and keep up the good work, and we'll see you around. Appreciate it, brother. Stay safe out there. All right. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, we have a lot of ride share guys and girls 
that listen to the show and this station for that matter. And uh, man, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, y'all are keeping DUI deaths down, wrecks down. Y'all do a great service. You really do. I'm a big fan of what you guys do. Not necessarily a big fan of some of those major conglomerates um, politics, but I can't hold the people, the boots on ground people responsible for how I feel about that. That'd be like me being angry at our, uh, at, at our service men and women because I don't agree with Joe Biden. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, a l- little, little strange analogy there, <laughs> but us free thinkers, man, we kind of go down deep rabbit holes. But uh, again, shout out to all the, the ride share folks out there, man. We do appreciate what you do. And uh, <clears throat> it ain't an easy job. You never know who you're going to pick up and what they're going to do. And, uh, they they robbing they robbing ride share folks and shooting them in Jackson. I said I ain't forgot about that girl from a few months back or last summer or whenever it was. Old white girl picked up a guy and he carjacked her, sent off of the woods and still shot her. I just don't understand. Why do you still have to shoot the person after you got what you wanted? I mean, is it is it as simple as just eliminating the witness? It made no sense. It just don't make sense to me. But why should it? Why should it? Um. Uh, I was um I, off completely off subject here. If you have Twitter and you want a good laugh or you want to follow a really good page, I mean libs of TikTok level troll worthy. A good page. I found it last night and I don't know how it hasn't been deleted yet, but it's called Gays Against Groomers. And uh, the address is just against, at against groomers. It was still up as of this morning. So uh, go check it out. It's got a bunch of great memes on it. And the gays have had enough of the grooming nonsense. And uh, y'all know we, we've got several great gay listeners of this show. Um, I'm not going to put that business out there. But there are a bunch of good gay conservatives out there. And God bless y'all. You talk about a, my, a rare minority but uh, we're glad to have you on, in our team. You can get in my foxhole anytime. Not that one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got uh, we got Derek on the Matt Geiger Flowood phone line. Uh, Derek, you there? Hey, good morning, brother. I just wanted to say real quick, y'all, um, we've been on a winning streak here as conservatives. Um, you know, through the through the um, Supreme Court justice, we struck a mighty blow. And I just got to tip my hat to the folks that's been protesting the abortion clinic for decades because they they proved that you know as long as you endure that's what wins a battle when you keep enduring you know what i mean those people had to you know they've had to tolerate all types of attacks and you know smear campaigns and people throwing stuff at them and everything but they endure they out endured and and you know like the bible says the one that endures to the end will receive the reward and that's what we got and like I said on Kim Wade's show, and I'm saying on my good friend Clay's show, for you black people, I don't want to hear y'all say nothing else that this country ain't made strides for you because they just made a major victory for you yes, um, the other day when, when they struck down Roe v. Wade. They shouldn't have, that was written badly from the start. So, again, let's get out here and show the uh, powers that be that we're not going to take it and that Mississippi was last and now it's becoming first. That's all I had to say, brother. Hey, hey, hold on before you go. Hey, what was the lady's name that started Planned Parenthood? Uh, Margaret Sanger. I saw or somebody said Margaret Sanger would be rolling her grave if she knew a black man overturned Roe v. Wade. She would. And then you see Asians out there protesting um, protesting as well for pro-abortion, but she called them weeds and said that they needed to be exterminated as well. She said that about Italians. She said that about a lot of foreigners. So while you people are out there protesting, supporting this crap, her, her, her whole goal was genocide. She, she would have a, if she were still alive, she would be in the Biden cabinet. She would. But I'm going to go ahead and say this, and, and, and it's going to be a controversial. Y'all, be, y'all beloved Michael King even supported her. You know who Michael King is, don't you? Not off the top of my head, no. That's, that was Martin Luther King's real name. Uh, MLK, yeah, yeah. yeah. Martin Luther was a, was a lie. And in order for him to be a junior, two people had to tell a lie. Both his daddy lied and he lied. His name was not Martin Luther. It was Michael King. He was Michael King Jr. They came up with the Martin Luther to make him sound more appealing. Let's go to show you that he was paraded out. When you read the book Blacks and Guns, he was really paraded out there to dumb people down is what he did. Well, they did the same thing with, with Obama. His name is Barry. Yeah, Barry Satoro. Yep. 
He didn't start taking his dad's last name until, like, later on. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All so, right. again, that's not to disparage anybody. It's just high time. We, and I am not disparaging Dr. King for his accomplishments. But there was a lot of things he'd done that he even questioned himself. He said, I believe I led my people into a burning house. I, that, that, is one of, that is one of his greatest lines. Derek, got to go, brother. Appreciate you, man. Stay blessed out there. Uh-huh. All right. All right, we got another call on the Matt Kiker Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hello? Clay. Hey. Clay. Yes. Hey, there are still three cases from the 2020 election, one in Arizona, one in Georgia, and one in Pennsylvania, that the Supreme Court has agreed to here, and I think they hear them all next session. That's so cool. I think that's why they're throwing this January stuff up there, because there's going to be something coming down for two on with that. I, mean, I, re- I truly do believe that. I got this feeling. So I, I, a little, little off track here, but on this subject, you know, I hate for, let's just say Cassidy wins this thing, man. I, I hate for him to go up there and let, let's say, let's just say a red wave hits. And I, I don't want him to spend too much time digging into the past. We got to move, yeah. we got to move to 2024. But, but I will say, I want to see some damn perk walks. I want to see some of these people who stole this election go to jail. Otherwise, yeah, it, if they don't, they're going to keep doing there. it. And it needs to be put out there. Oh, yeah. We, what they're doing now is a bunch of nonsense. The thing about it, nobody's ordered discovery in this case. There have not been any real investigation. They didn't go by ballot, by ballot, by ballot, which would be about 20 million of them. Confirmed the people that were, were actually voted, voted, and made sure they were eligible to vote. Because I got news for you. When you're a convicted felon, they don't take you off the list. I guarantee you they don't. They keep you on there. Oh, ain't no doubt about it. And how many convicted felons we got around the land that probably voted? That's what I want to know. Yeah, they That's don't. What would sway Georgia? Yeah, you know they don't purge the rolls, especially in a state like Georgia with with that many Democrats. They probably don't do it in Mississippi. No, not in if Jackson. You want to know the truth? Not, not in Hines County. Uh, all right, brother. I, I gotta take a break, man. Right. But, but you know the bad thing about all this is, man, they're throwing all this stuff out here just right before the midterms. Why didn't they wait till after the midterms? They got to get their base fired up. Yeah. It's all they take a bath. People care more about five dollars a gallon of gas than they do about abortion or a couple of crazy people running in. Now, why ain't we having hearings on Black Lives Matter when they were burning half the damn cities in this country? That's what I want to know. Yeah, they did way more damage than anybody did on January sixth. Well, and that's the thing. That's uh, just uh, if you want to look at the attack on the Portland courthouse. That was a federal courthouse. That would technically, by their definition, be an insurrection, but that don't matter. Hey, well, I, what did they do to downtown Seattle? And remember the Target? The I believe police it station? was in Maine they burned down. I think it was Minneapolis. It was Target Minneapolis. Minneapolis. They're, they're, based, out, they're based out of Minnesota there, so that's why they got burned down. Hey, i got to take a break, brother. I appreciate I'm you. Uh, you too. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. It's a two-hour show today. I'm here for two hours. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We got about a minute and a half before the break, and we've got a special caller on the line. Hey, brother, are you there? Yes, Clay, I am. Thank you. And we've got Michael Cassidy on the Mac Hike of Flowood phone line. I'm going to let him finish off the top of the hour here. Brother, you got about a minute and a half if you want to hit it. All right, thank you. So, for everybody listening, the polls are now open. They're open. They've been uh, open an hour. we got 11 hours left. Today is the day to go out and vote for me, Michael Cassidy. We've got, uh, I mean, it's the establishment versus America first on the ballot today. If you think that our country is on the right track, well, uh, that makes you in the very small minority. If you, however, if you're one of the 90% of people, uh, and probably more than that of the people listening, that think that our country needs some radical change, then that means that you want to vote for me. I'm going to go up there and promote election integrity, promote pro-life, promote getting the leftism out of our military and fighting back against cultural Marxism, getting back to energy independence. All of these things, the Republican Party up in D.C., they don't care about fighting for it. I care about fighting for it. So if you think, again, that we need change, then please make a plan to go out and vote today for me. Tell your friends and family, your neighbors as well. We need all the support that we can get. Thanks again for having me on, Clay. Appreciate it. Have a blessed day, man. Good luck today. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, I'll extend this. Michael Guest, if you'd like to call into the show, counter that. You're welcome to. 601-879-0002. And we'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. This is our number two. Uh, shout out Michael Cassidy. You know, like I said, man, you never know who's listening, man. One of the most popular guys in the state right now tuned in to the Clay Edwards Show. I can dig that. I can dig that. That's how you get my vote. <laughs> you listen to my show. All right, man. Look, this segment is going to be brought to you by how about my good friends over at at Guns and Gear, uh, Hunter and Team. They sponsor our text line here, the Guns and Gear text line, which that number is 769-241-1944. But if you are in the market for some guns or ammo, or you need some work done on your ammo, on your guns, your firearms, give them a shout. 601-707-5713 or check them out online at Guns and Gear MS.com. And like I've been telling you, follow them on social media. They post great deals of the day. Every day, and to make it hard, hard, hard for a brother not to go spend money on more guns. <laughs> so uh, anyway, check them out, gunsandgearms.com, located right out there at 51 and Yandel Road. Cannot miss them. All right. Well, I'll tell you all a quick story real quick. When I was getting ready to leave here yesterday, I walk out, and my car has got a flat tire. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Has one of my stalkers come out here and slash my tires while I was on the radio. And I, I walk over to the gas station next door. I was going to get a can of Fix-A-Flat. And so I could put some air in it and kind of get to where I was going. And uh, the gas station next door, the radio station, doesn't sell Fix-A-Flat. And I know people out there that work on cars are hearing me say Fix-A-Flat and they're cringing. Especially guys that have to take the tires off and their fix flat in it. Um, so I walk back over. And I, I sit there and I pray for a second. I'm like, I am way out here in Flora. I live in Brandon. A tow truck is going to be really, really expensive. And because uh, I have 22 or 24 inch wheels or something with low profile tires, I, just, I don't think the little tire shop here in Flora is going to be equipped. And that's just me assuming maybe they are equipped to handle <clears throat> this pain in the butt I'm about to, have to deal with. So I drive, I get in the car and I drive it ne- back next door to the gas station and. I put some air in the tire and it holds. I'm like, all right, do what do I want to try to do here? So I prayed again. And I, this was the prayer y'all. I said, dear Lord, I've been fighting the good fight. I, I, I've been fighting against these baby killers for the last couple of weeks. I've been fighting against the LGBTQ pride folks. I, I, I've been taking a bunch of arrows fighting. Please, please let my tire hold so I can get through Jackson, Mississippi without having a flat and be stuck on the side of the road. Jesus answered those prayers and he let me get all the way to my tire shop that I prefer. And I pull in on a flat. I ended up having to buy four new tires because they were all dry rotted. These tires aren't two years old, by the way, but I got them when I was working at the dealership and uh, saved some bucks, getting some cheap tires. I'm not mad at nobody. I got two years out of them. (laughs) Ironically, I had to buy them the week of my wedding because I was coming down I-20 in Jackson right there in front of the uh, the old Allstate, I guess the JSU East Center, and a cross tie had fallen off the back of a truck, and I run over a cross tie, and um, it blew out my tires. A week, week of my wedding, you know, the last thing you want to have to spend money on the week of your wedding is four new tires. It was back in 2019, <clears throat> so I guess I actually had the tires two and a half years. And they're still in great shape because I don't drive the car that much, literally just to work and back. So I probably hadn't put 20,000 miles on the car in the last three years. But anyway, always going through, uh, it's always Jackson, isn't it? Always Jackson. Uh, there are more flat tires on that I-20 area. But long story short, God answered my prayers, got me to the tire shop. I called my dad. I'm like, hey, I need a ride back to Brandon. Can you give me a ride? And... um. <clears throat> Just uh, there's seven hundred dollars, six hundred fifty three dollars that I didn't plan on spending on tires. So, if you need your car washed, or detailed, or ceramic coated, uh, holla at your boy down at Auto Armor, and uh, let me get you on the schedule because I need to make up the money I just had to spend. But uh, don't feel sorry for me. I will be okay. I will be okay. But look, man. Uh, also, man, check out Take a Break Delivery today. If I if you're, if you're gonna have to spend your lunch time in the voting, standing in line to vote. Instead of going to get lunch, when you get back to work, call take uh, use the Take a Break app. Get food delivered from Take a Break Deliveries. Uh, you can go to their website, 
takeabreakdeliveries.com or just download the app from your app store of choice. And if it's your, if it's your first time using Take a Break Deliveries, Use uh, the discount code or promo code CLAY601 with a capital C, and you're going to get $4 off your first order. So you can't beat that. And uh, they, they send out new promo codes every day to save three, four, five bucks. You just never know what they're going to do. Taco Tuesday is today, too, by the way. And they usually have a pretty good promo code on Taco Tuesday. I want to say last week it was for $5 off. Uh, that'll vary. But again, take a break deliveries, locally owned, locally operated, veteran owned, veteran operated. Um, speaking of veterans, real quick, um, let's see here. I just got a text on the guns and gear text line from Josh and he is, uh, he is set up outside one of the, one of the precinct, the voting precincts with his Cassidy signs. And he said, this guest supporter was telling me how Cassidy doesn't know what he wants. I said he defeat he defended the country and was a patriot, and the lady tells him that's sad for America. That is that's what we're dealing with here, people. There's people who think that because they may disagree with Michael Cassidy that he was a patriot that what is a patriot and a pilot and a veteran that, that because you disagree because you like Michael Guest so much that somehow that disqualifies. Cassidy is being a true patriot. That's disappointing. That is disappointing. Have we gotten so, have we gotten so ate up with this that we can't call a spade a spade? Come on, man. That's tough. And uh, Josh also sent me a, a a picture of an, a different pamphlet that they have mailed out that I had not seen yet. It's a picture of. The Capitol building. I'm, lefties will see this and start having convulsions. Like, oh, that's where January six happened. But uh, it's got a it's got a road that splits, and to the left says Michael Cassidy, and uh, the sign says Michael Cassidy, or a political wannabe who can be trusted. And then the other one says a Michael Guest, a trusted, experienced public servant. Servant. And see, that's where the problem comes in for me. I. I'm, I'm kind of over trusted, experienced public servants. It's time for a new wave of tr- trusted public servants that uh that have America first in mind, not Ukraine, none of that, not January sixth, not Benny Thompson. I, I would never. We, if y'all thought we were going to let go of January sixth and we were just going to get over it. I I know y'all at that crew, y'all have got to be aggravated. Why won't y'all just quit talking about it? Because you won't quit talking about it. And even if you weren't, we still wouldn't. We are never going to let y'all forget about burning down all the cities in the BLM Antifa riots of the summer of 2020. Never going to let y'all forget that. But somehow that was okay because it goes, it goes, you're virtuous. It, you, you believe in the cause, it, but that was over racism, Clay. No, it wasn't. Y'all's racism. That was because you're a bunch of hoodlums and you wanted to burn something down and rob and steal. Were the, were the free Nikes and TVs and all the looting you did, was that because of racism too? We are never going to let y'all forget that. And when we get back, when the red wave hits, there needs to be some retro crime fighting involved and people, some of these people need to go to jail. All right, looks like we got a call here on the Mac Hike of Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hey, Clay, how you doing this morning? Man, I'm going good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. This is Chris. I got one quick question. Y'all don't know. You don't even have to introduce yourself anymore. I know your voice. <laughs> y'all don't want people to forget about slavery, and y'all don't want to forget about January 6th. Y'all don't want people to forget about the burning down of Tulsa. Black Wall Street, but y'all don't want to forget about January 6th. How that, that kind of run it? Who y'all is don't want it? other people to forget about the structure that happened to them, but y'all don't want to forget anything that happened to y'all. Who wants people to forget about it? I don't know these people. I, I'm actually reading a book about slavery right now. I don't want to forget about it. I want to. I want to learn I, more I about all of it. A lot of people, no, lot, no, you hear a lot of calls talking about why they forget about it. It's done. It's in the past. It's just like January 6th. Well, the argument I'll make, and I always enjoy your phone calls, by the way. So I, I appreciate you. you always bring up good points, and I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind uh, going back and forth with you a little bit on it. Um, I think there's a there's a the glaring difference is one is ancient history, 
and one is present day. We're currently dealing with this in our day to day lives history. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 no, but also, if y'all keep talking about what we're black, uh, the quote, we uh, looting around the black mass were doing, black lives matter were actually doing it. It was just some people who was out there doing it. You actually had people who were storming where we make laws. That our vice president of the United States of America was in that building when they did that. Well, you know, I, um, I, I often say it all the time that most of that looting, rioting, and burning down were white people <laughs> with Black Lives Matter shirts on, with purple hair. And just angry Antifa tards who are pretending to be Black Lives Matter because they think you get a free pass if you say you're Black Lives Matter. Oh no, no, I'm doing this for racial injustice. Oh, okay, we're burning down this black business. You, I mean, you do see the irony in that, right? Exactly, because I, 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 I just hey, burning down business ain't gonna do nothing. No, I mean going down there still ain't gonna do nothing. They, they're gonna they, they, they actually is it, gonna water down our, the, 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 the the protests where we was what they were protesting about. It's going gonna, it gonna to make it less, no, it's going it, it, it to be like, well, they out there doing this, so they, mean, they really don't want to see no change. It, it ain't going to bring about no change that does that. It's just going to make it like, well, next time they protest, something else going to happen. It's going to make it to a point where we try to protest police and justice, it's going to say, well, they ain't going to do but looting and riot. No, this was, was, to me, I believe they were planted there to, 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 to bring the message down. Cause like y'all like to tell people when when social injustice happens, when police believe tactics, y'all would say comply. How come the people in general sit just need to comply and leave? So you have works both ways. You know, I I had to do that the other day. I had a cop come up to me at a gas station in Brandon that didn't like the way I was parked in the gas station parking lot. My wife had ran in the store, and I was just kind of pulled up, kind of sideways in front of the building because there was nowhere to park. And I was waiting on her to come outside. <clears throat> My stepdaughter's in the back seat. He knocks on the window and tells me, basically calls me an a-hole for the way I was parked. But at the end of the day, he just wanted to be parked exactly where I was. It took me a second because I almost went back to 19-year-old South Jackson Clay and started cussing him out. But I said, you know what? <laughs> I say, Clay, you, you have to do what you preach to other people about doing and just shut up and comply because no, just nothing good will come from you trying to be – the smart ass in this comment in this conversation and 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 it's tough i get it look i i don't i don't disagree with everything you say you made some good points but we we have to we have to hold people accountable that burn down cities and if you can't if we don't hold them accountable i don't want to hear anything about holding people accountable that storm the capital period i think yeah fair fair is fair that's true but i mean how can you hold people accountable if you don't know who actually did it? Well, the, if, if everybody hadn't took a bend to knee and was more concerned about uh, virtue signaling and actually did their jobs, they would know. They could know. They could use that same technology that they use, that geo-tracking technology that they used to figure out who was at the Capitol to do the burning down of the cities. And they know. Heck, there's a study came out at a recent sheriff's conference or sheriff's convention. Or inter, it was an interdiction convention, convention up in Chicago. They went and they used that geo that geofencing stuff, and they went back and found the people that they had arrested. And believe it or not, I'm not making this up. True story here. Most of the people they arrested for violent crimes during the BLM rights were men, white men, that were transitioning to female. Oh, I believe you. Because they're a bunch of angry, angry people. So just a little little food for thought. Like I say, when I, when I mention the BLM stuff, I always say that it's your typical white liberal pretending to be uh, a, a BLMer. Anyway, Chris, I got to take a break, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, have a good one. You too. Vote Cassidy. <laughs> All right, man. We'll be right back on the Clay Edwards Show on 103.9 WYAB. All right. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We are live here on 103.9 WYAB, streaming worldwide at WYAB.com and on the TuneIn app. So be sure to check it out. And people ask me, Clay, why don't you have an app? We can. You can make it an app. <laughs> pull up the uh, pull up your browser on your, on your phone. Go to the WYAB. Hit the stream live or listen live button at the top and save that to your homepage. Uh, I've done it for several people. It's very easy. Uh, if you know you can work your way around a phone, very very simple. Just hit add to homepage, and boom, 
There it is. It's a browser, but it's got the app button so you don't have to go type in all the www dots and all that stuff every time. So that's what I do. My my my, my radio antenna is not very good on my car for some reason. <clears throat> so no radio stations pick up good, not just this one. So I um I have it set as an app on my phone and when I get in my car the Bluetooth links up and W Y A B starts rolling. All right, uh real quick, this segment is gonna be brought to you by Mack Hike, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram of Flowwood. Check them out online, MacHikeCDJRF.com. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle, Mack Hike, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Flowwood should be your one-stop shop. They've got trucks, people. I know a lot of dealerships don't have trucks. they got trucks. <laughs> Go see them. Be sure to tell them that you heard it on the Clay Edwards Show. Go see my buddy Corey, Abe, Brandon, Parker, Hunter. They're all over there. Mack Hike and Flowood, right on airport, right on uh, Lakeland Drive at Airport Road. All right, man, let's uh let's shift gears just a little bit here. Uh look, phone lines are open. Oh, you know what? Before I shift gears, there is a caller on hold on the Mack Hike of Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, thanks for staying on hold. I almost forgot about you there. You on there? Corey. Hey. Corey, I'm sorry, man. Why you didn't get that officer's badge number and his name? Because he had no right to tell you to move or try to curse you out about it. Because they cannot do anything on private property when you're on Unless the, the the store owner or their agent tells you you couldn't park there, you had no right telling you that. I know, and and it all happened so fast. I just and then Crystal came out of the store and got in the car, but man, it just it, it short circuited me. I was so I, I was so mad the rest of the day, but you know, I I talked the talk. I got to walk the walk about you know just get you know not not just obey, but sometimes you got to bite your tongue and 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 go on about your day. But it was a well, uh, it was aggravating. As you know, Clay, I'm a 20-plus year veteran, yep. and I have always stood, uh, spoke up when officers come up with disgusting like that. If that store agent or owner didn't tell you you couldn't park there, you had to move, he had no right coming on private property and telling you, because when you're at a store, that's an agreement between you and that and the, the party that runs that store or the owns it. He had no right doing that. And I would have got his name and number, and I would have owned his badge before, before um, nightfall. Because that, that 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 crap ain't that crap is uncalled for, and I speak up against stuff like that. You've never in your life, or never will, and people who hear me, you can call Newton Police Department, you can call Meridian, you can call Gulfport, all the places I, I'm excuse me, Harrison County, places I work. You will not find it on, on my record. I was always firm but fair. He had no right doing that. That was just an arrogant scumbag prick, is what that was. Yeah, I agree. I wasn't happy with it at all. It just seemed like you got you, you got better things to do. I, I feel like he wanted to be parked where I was because he was parked directly behind me, and the only other way to park was where I was. So it was, and I was literally just sitting in the car. I was leaving. I'd been there for all of a minute and a half. It just seemed very. It seemed very unnecessary. But prime, yeah. ex- prime example, I was there the day um, Sam decided he was going to close up shop and go to Madison because the homeless guy used to come out there to Ridgewood Court that was owned by North Park Mall. I was working security at the time when I first moved here. And um, that guy was disrupting restaurant, a little homeless guy. I went out there and was able to get him to the ground, cuff him, JPD comes, they refuse to rest. Well, Mayor Johnson's policy against the homeless. I said, policy doesn't trump law, sir. I said, and then he going to try to tell my, my my captain of the security company to be quiet because him and the homeless guy, I said, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, back up. First of all, I'm a proud Malota graduate, 20 plus years experience. You will not talk to me or him like that. I said, I could tell you to get the H E double hiking fix off our property. This is private property. You either you enforce the law or you leave and take that and take that homeless trash with you. And I dare him to try to put cuffs on me. I don't think he said, Oh man, Malota was a tough cat. I said, That's right, Malota is. So you're not gonna come out here and big talk nobody because you got no rights here. We called you because of crime committed. Either you do your job or you get that homeless trash with you and leave and take him to Mayor Jumbo. And then the whole time this was going on, the, the district manager of Sam's was watching, and he made a decision right there on the spot. Uh, I, w- I was there, Clay, the day they decided to move Sam's out of Jackson because of stuff like that. Yeah, and, and uh, so much other stuff has followed. Derek, I appreciate you, brother. I'm getting fired up again just thinking about it. I may go part wrong at the gas station in Brandon when I leave here. <laughs> have a good one, brother. You too. Bye. Yeah, look, man, I, I I hate stuff like that. But every now and then you got to bite your tongue and know that, you know, I used to young Clay would have been like, oh, man, all, all cops are bastards. You know, ain't that the thing they like to say, a cab or whatever? You know, 20 year old Clay would have 
would have been all mad and made a Facebook post about it. 44-year-old Clay just moves on and goes about his business, moves his car. All right, man, we got another call on the Mack Hike of Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Sylvia. How you doing? I'm doing A-OK. I know you had a rough time with that law enforcement individual. Oh, yeah, it wasn't bad. It, it, it was a nuisance. I wouldn't call it a rough time. It was just one of those er moments, and you go on about your business. Oh, good. Well, I wanted to share something real quick about um, a Jackson police officer who uh, was helpful, very helpful. I was going downtown town to file charges on this young man who spit on me and called me out my name and then tried to hit me, but he wasn't able to do that because I was able to block his hit. And my hand ended up somewhere on him. I don't know uh, where. But anyway, besides that point, I went downtown to JPD, and I had forgotten my case cards. I had to come back home, went back down there, and I forgot my phone inside the lift vehicle, and then I had to get that. I did get it. It was a very stressful day. But Corporal Young, if I can go ahead and say his name, was very helpful. He was about ready to leave, and I'm and I'm inside, inside the building now. I'm just frantic and upset, crying out to Jesus. And he walked over to me, and he asked me what was going on, and he helped me get my phone back. But what I wanted to say is that he took the time. He's leaving. This is why I respect him. So he I felt very safe with him, felt very protected, and I felt that he was a caring, kind, and professional uh, corporal. And I just really appreciate him for doing what he did because I was frantic, and he calmed me down. And, ma'am, we're going to do such and such. And this was really very, very helpful because I, I was not thinking well. And because I was so upset. And I just wanted to give kudos to Corporal John Young. Well, good stuff there. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. All righty. Have a good day now. You, you too. Stay Thank blessed you. out there. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Look, man. Again, that's why I didn't come on here and say anything about it. I ain't going to whine about it. It was just kind of brought up in conversation there. But it was just, you know, one of those annoying little things that we go through on our day to day lives. You know, it's like, what? I'm just parked. Yeah, whatever. I was. I probably was part wrong, so it's a moot point. But it was private property, you know. So, anyway, hey, real quick, I, we we got to take a break. But I want to play something and, and let y'all marinate on it during the during the break. Uh, Lori Lightfoot, the the vaunted mayor of Chicago, um, just found out that elections have consequences. <laughs> this is a uh, the salt is is so amazing with this. Here we go. Because elections do matter. I'm going to remind you of what I said um, those few weeks ago. If Hillary Clinton had been the president, we wouldn't be sitting here having this horrible outcome in our country. Because elections... And if my grandmother had a penis, she'd be my grandfather. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Clay Edwards Show. We are live here on 103.9 WYAB. So we ended the the last segment with a clip of Lori Lightfoot deciding that elections have consequences. And I want to add to that. So I'm going to play it one more time. It's only about 15 seconds. Because elections do matter. I'm going to remind you of what I said um, those few weeks ago. If Hillary Clinton had been the president, yes. we wouldn't be sitting yes. here having this horrible outcome in our country. Because elections do matter. <laughs> you, you, you're dang right they matter. Um. Y'all, somebody needs to help me make it make sense. Why is the LGBTQ LMNOP crowd so fired up over abortions? Is anybody going to answer this? Because if they're staying true to the calls, keeping it 100, they ain't supposed to be impregnating or getting impregnated. It's not how this whole thing works. They should be sitting this out. This argument is between a man and a woman that like men and women separate. You know what I'm saying here. Um, Why are the gay folks, or not even the gay folks, again, I love y'all. I'm talking about the LGBTQ agenda folks, the child pedophile folks. Why are they so obsessed with this abortion stuff? 
It does not affect them. And let me ruin your days. Let me absolutely ruin your day here. Do y- y'all think there's a single human being who wants to be with uh, Lori Lightfoot, a male? Like, you think there's some guy that sees her and like, man, I am feeling Beetlejuice. It's, oh, ugh. I heard somebody say that last night on a podcast, and I it ruined my night. So I thought I would ruin all of y'all's days thinking about uh, Lori Lightfoot. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, elections have consequences, folks. Don't forget it. All right, we got a call here on the Mac Hike of Flowwood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hey, Clay. Hey, brother, how you doing? Well, I just wanted to make a, a larger point about the abortion thing. I, I don't think the the LGBTs and the liberals in general, they act, they're, some of them are genuinely upset about the abortion thing, but most of it is states' rights. This is a big blow to the communist central centralist way of thinking and a big win for federalism, whether it's abortion or, or it's letting the states do what the states want to do. No, I agree 100 percent because they've been will, they've been wielding with this with this fear of the supreme you know using the supreme bullying the supreme court to get what they want in every state for a while now. Up until recently, the liberal has has counted on the court system to do what they couldn't do through legislation, and now it's, they're throwing stuff back to the states, and it scares the living crap out of them. Abortion is just uh, the surface. They, their real fear is states' rights. I agree. I agree. But you know, but they love this abortion stuff. So I'm gonna, every time every time it comes up, and they looting and hooting and hollering in the streets, I'm gonna ask them why, because in theory it shouldn't affect them. But no, you're 100 percent right. We know that's the reason. And then, you know, they scream, oh, is gay marriage next? Is, is, uh, all these other things. I, I, I would doubt it. I, I'd be surprised if, if that came down, but, well, you know, I never thought we would get abortion overturned. So who knows? We live in a bold new world. If they don't like it, they can move. I mean, there'll be states where that stuff's allowed, you know, and, uh, you're free to go wherever you want in this country. What's well, the same so, thing? Uh, same thing they told me about me complaining about Jackson when I started the Save Jackson page and all that stuff. If you don't like it here, leave. If you don't like it, leave. Well, touche. You don't like it, leave. You can vote at the ballot box and you can vote with your feet. So uh, there's two ways to vote. Speaking of which, I got my vote in this morning. Uh, everybody needs to get out and vote. And uh, you have a good day, Clay. You too, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Let's go to our next caller on the Mac Hike of Flowwood phone line. Hey, good morning, caller. You're on there. Hello. Hey, good morning. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, I just wanted to give you an update. I'm working with the Cassidy campaign, and I'm at the Word Life of Church on Lakeland Drive, and Democrats are rolling in here like it's nobody's business. Probably five or six to one with guest shirts on. They're just really flooding the polls over here in Rankin oh. County, so people need to get out and vote. Let me let me ask this: isn't it isn't it against the rules to wear a campaign shirt inside the polling place to vote? Yeah, yeah I believe it is, but I see them. Co- I mean, I'm not up by the I'm out by the street, so yeah. I see them coming in. But they sure got their shirts on, and they're coming in in groves. Well, hopefully the uh, the Cassidy voters will show up in droves when they get off work today. Amen. I appreciate y'all's support. Yes, sir. We appreciate you, man, doing what you're doing out there. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye. Uh, goodbye. Bye. You know, on, on a side note, <clears throat> I, I said this after the primaries. I want to reiterate it. I just want to say thank you to all the people out there working polls that do what y'all what, doing what y'all are doing. I know that every 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 time this comes up, one of us are complaining about whether well, this took too long or this took too long or something seems shady and all that stuff. And that comes with the job. As Kim Wade says, that's life in the big city. But uh, I do just want to say thank y'all to all of y'all who get up there and y'all do this. So uh, kudos because it, it, it's a, it's a thankless job and there's always going to be somebody unhappy. Uh, people are always in a rush and you're dealing with a lot of different personalities. So uh, again, just shout out, tell your poll worker today when you see him, thank you. You know, uh, let's see here, man. We got a couple texts on the Guns and Gear text line. Um, my buddy Daniel sends in, where are the fact checkers when it comes to the fear mongering about ectopic 
pregnancy on social media. Ectopic pregnancies are not abortions, or I should say treatment for ectopic pregnancy is not abortion. Uh, Daniel, hitting a little above my pay grade, I probably should have proofread that. Let me, let me, uh, let me do a quick Google search, and I will get back to you with a better opinion on that. Hey, the Guns and Gear text line is 769-241-1944. So speaking of the abortion stuff, <clears throat> they're filing lawsuits. The Pink House is filing lawsuits to try to get a stay on the, uh, on the ruling, on the trigger law in Mississippi. And I was just thinking about this. The, the, I don't know how this 10 day thing ended up in there. I may ask, uh, Stephen during the break here, Stephen Utroska is uh, filling in for Mike again today. And, uh, <clears throat> he's a wealth of knowledge. So I may go tap into his brain and see where this 10 day deal came from. But how would you like to be the baby that, or the parent that makes a, this a young girl that's making a bad decision on day 10? And if you waited just one more day, you get to day 11 and you live and you're not, you're not stuck with the knowing you had an abortion for the rest of your life. That's, I, I don't, that just that thought kind of came to mind, just felt very heavy. Or, you know, we, what about the babies that make it to day 11 and they get to live? Would their mama tell them, I was in the abortion clinic or I just missed aborting you by a day? But, God lined it all up where I didn't. And thank God I didn't. You know, would there be a lot of that? I just think about these things. As you get a little older and, you know, you think about the bad decision you almost made or the one that you made but you almost didn't make and you regret it for the rest of your life. When all that starts to kind of line up, you know, and you got this 10-day thing here. Who folded down at the legislature? I think this was uh, put in an excuse me if I'm wrong here. I'm just kind of shoot from the hip. Uh, the sugar law was put in back in, was it 07, I think, or 14. Anyway, that's a big difference there, but <clears throat> who folded down there and gave them the 10 day grace period. All right. Now when this kicks in, we're going to let you kill babies for 10 more days. We're going to let you kill them for 10 more days. I just, uh, doesn't make sense to me, but, only nine more days. I hope the protests are really getting ramped up down there. You know, I hope our Christians and our our, our our guys that have been down there fighting that fight at the pink house, the guys and girls are down there doing their thing. I really do. <clears throat> Let's see here on the guns and gear text line. Daniel followed back up with a little definition of an ectopic pregnancy and I, I will read that during the break and and get to it on the other side of the break but um yeah man i just i pray for folks that are make that are in that tough decision making process you, you young women out there or old women or whoever you know that that you you weigh out all your options and if you're just damned and determined to not have a child to see it through and give it up for adoption uh, we had folks on the show yesterday talking about abortion and you know, they said that uh, newborn baby adoptions are at the all-time highs. So you, th- there's a waiting list. You know, so there's plenty of people who will take your child. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to abort. It will not. Uh, y- young babies do not sit in a uh, in orphanage. Unfortunately, you get kids that get into the pro to the system that get taken by the state, and they do. Um, but young babies, newborns, apparently they're in extremely high demand. That sounds weird talking about children like a like a product, but you know what I mean. I'm probably just not the best person to articulate that. But uh, anyway, all right, look, we're going to take a break real quick because I'd like to come back and end the show with more than two or three minutes. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. All right, welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We've got about five minutes here to kind of land the plane for the day. Uh, real quick, man, look, it's coming up July 30th, it's, it, it ain't that far away. Go on and mark your calendars. Mississippi Carters Association and Drive Your Line are having their next big race out there at Buddy Butts Park Saturday, July 30th. For more information, 
Check them out online at misscarding.com. That's the Mississippi Carters Association website, misscarding.com. And if you're looking to get into racing, carts, check out Drive Your Line. Christy Kendall and the team over there, driveyourline.com. They help you out with all your carts, parts, and accessories at Drive Your Line. Hey, um, real quick, I had a question come in, and who is the uh, ranking, the head of the Rankin County GOP? We just, uh, we just want to let y'all know, man, that um, they're going to be keeping an eye on, keeping an eye on everybody tonight. Make sure the vote comes in clean and crisp and clear, and uh, there's no, uh, no funky business. You know, I went over to the circuit clerk's office yesterday, and this is on Rankin County public property. I, I'm sure that there's a. I'm sure it's not illegal, but it feels highly unethical and a bit of a uh, conflict of interest, if nothing else. Somebody's got an old Chevy truck backed up to Highway 80 right there in downtown Brandon, as using it as a rolling billboard with a huge Michael Guest yard, uh, wood sign in the back on, on government property. Again, I'm sure it's not illegal, but I, it's, it's highly questionable. But that's what's going on, you know. Um, it, what an awkward spot to put yourself in if um if Cassidy pulls this thing out. You know, it's like, I'm seeing those yard signs come down quick, ain't you? But hey, that's politics, man. I love this stuff. Let's put it in my veins. Put it in my veins, man. This is uh this has been fun, but um it's serious though. It's fun, but it's serious. And shout out to everybody that's been involved. In the uh, I, I've, I've worked with some of the, the folks on the Cassidy campaign and and on the guest campaign. Look, man, well the the guest campaign didn't really get cranked up until uh until the until after the primary. They've been having to put in overtime, but the uh, the Cassidy campaign has been out there killing it, man. And I think y'all have done a great job. You've rewritten the rule books on how to come in and and win an election in Mississippi. And uh, frankly, if it had to been for Griffin being the third candidate in the original primary, there wouldn't be a runoff because Cassidy would have had enough votes to not need one. All right, man, we have got a caller here. Hey, caller, you got about a minute left. What you got? Hello, my name's Erica. I'm with UGS Partners with Comcast. May I speak to the person that handles the phone and internet? Oh, they're out of town right now. Thank you, though. Of course, of course, we'd get a, a spam call as the last call of the day. We hadn't had one of those in a while. I should have told her she was on the air. Anyway, look, man, it's been a great show today. Y'all guys get out and vote. <sighs> Freaking robocall, really? At least it was a real person. Check out ClayEdwardsShow.com. Steven Yatroska is going to be coming up next, and he's going to dive into the 10-day uh, ex- uh, exception on this trigger law. He's done a little research and he'll have that for you. Uh, Steven is filling in for Mike Madison for today and tomorrow, I believe. So it'll be good stuff there. You guys don't change that dial. Stay tuned. Jameson Haygood will be coming up at 2. Kim Wade at 4. Should be a wild day. Get out. Vote. This podcast will be available here shortly. Just go to clayedwardshow.com or any and all major podcasting and or music streaming services. It will be up. Also, we do podcast the Kim Wade Show, too. So get that up. You know, go type in Kim Wade Show and hit subscribe and follow Kim Wade. If you miss him in the afternoons, you can always listen to the podcast. Same as mine. I will see you guys here tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. W-Y-A. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.